Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Matt and I'm going to show you how the levels and curves tools in Photoshop work and operate and try to give you an understanding of what's going on so that you're able to make a decision of when to use it and how to use it because you're, you're probably familiar with them for using them to increase contrast and uh, simple things like that but they have some other useful tools that I use when I'm um, trying to play with my masks on the f images and documents that I'm working on in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you and kind of run through it with you and help you grasp the tool at a better level than perhaps you have had. And if you don't yet understand how they work, I'm going to try and give you that understanding so that you can understand what's going on within the program. So to get started, if you uh, open Photoshop and just hit Control L, or you can go up to your uh, image adjustments levels. Uh, that's in a destructive workflow, meaning once I make any adjustments in here, it's going to apply it to the image. I typically don't like working in that workflow, but for what I'm showing you here, uh, it'll work. So Control L, bring open the levels, and here on the screen, I just have a gradient going from black uh, 000 and to white. I'm in an RGB color space and if you look over here at the output levels and the input levels, um, that kind of that pretty much explains it pretty straightforward. The output levels are what here's the input. So here's your gray to black or your <laughs> your black to white, just like the gradient here is down here. I have going from black to white. This is the same thing going on here, and I did that so we could uh, give you a better understanding of what's going on. So the input level shows this is what. Um, if it was a, 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 a graph, right, over here being black and over here on the far right side of the graph uh, on the x-axis, you have white. And on the y-axis, you have showing uh, in, you know, a numerical amount of how much of each one of those colors are in the image. So here it's pretty even. You can see there's this little curve here. So it's going from a black to white. All right. Now the input levels is just that. It says this is what you have in the image and I want to output it going from black to white. So if I bump up this output level to say a mid gray, it now says this entire image here, I want to output it from beginning at the lowest darkest value, which will be this mid gray level and then work its way up to the white level. And you can see over here how the black is now a, a mid tone gray. And if I go and take it down to a darker gray, it darkens basically that. And if you look at it when I apply it, it kind of looks like it's scaling um, the gradient. If you were to take it and scale it out this way, it looks like it's just moving the gradient out for you. And and that's what the output levels does. It basically says, you know, I want the colors to be at a max this level and at a min minimum level of these values. And for some reason it just kicked me out. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Now, a second thing to remember is why does it have 255 and not 100? Because in an RGB color space, each channel, this talking about the red, green, and blue, it has 255 levels or degrees of brightness um, from going from no, if we're looking at just the red channel, it has zero red, which would be zero, to 100% red is 255. And so there's 255 steps or increments between uh, no red and no and 100%. So uh, this is kind of representing that is the 255 levels. And that's pretty common within an 8-bit RGB document. Um, and I think it's probably going to be the same in a 16-bit. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't worked in there for a, quite uh, a while though I did used to work in a 16-bit color uh, color profile, but you're going to work in most of your images in this. So that'll give you probably, I think it's like 1.3, 1.4 million colors when you add that up. And I'll create another tutorial to help you understand what is this uh, RGB color space and how it operates. It, you may already have an understanding, but I'm going to have another tutorial that will show you more in depth of what's going on and how it creates the colors in a later tutorial. Right now we're just going to show you levels and curves. So I hope you understand the output levels, meaning if I bring down the uh, the white, you can see how it darkens that white to this, this level here. Now if I adjust the input levels, um, I'll, I'll just show you. Let's if I bring this up, see how it makes everything, it brings all these colors over here, it darkens all these, and that's exactly what it does. It says on this left side, um, on the left side, this is black. It says this is what's coming into the image 
and I want this here to be the black level and I want this level here to be the white level and right here in the middle is this is mid gray so if I scale this up and again look at noticing it has 255 if I move it up to 70 it says everything below um, 68 is going to be made a hundred percent black and that is represented over here in the image and it looks like it's just basically um, uh, adjusting the end of the gradient okay you're scaling it down instead of scaling it up in a sense okay so this will obviously clip your black so you're gonna be losing all this data in your image when you make this adjustment so where there were additionally gray tones in this area it's now 100 percent black and it does that on the same as the white side you see how that does that it just pushes that out so if you were, were to edit an image you would really um, adjust your your contrast within the image quite a lot and I don't normally use this tool for doing that because you lose all this data here when you make this kind of an adjustment and so I normally don't do that when I'm editing an, an, an image but I hope you understand what's what's going on in the image with looking at this gradient here to give you an understanding of what it's doing to it actually going on behind the scenes so that you can make a decision when you need to use that tool because I do use this tool um, I just don't use it a lot for increasing the contrast within an image unless you know there's certain exceptions but I'm not going to go into that today so let's do an image and just kind of give you an idea of what the, what it would do so this is a histogram if I didn't explain that earlier this is a histogram showing the values in the image as in a graph so there's a lot of darks here it's, it's showing me and then there's a little spike of some highlights here so if I bring down the blacks meaning I clip them see everything goes black <clears throat> and I've lost all that data and then if I do the same thing with white it kind of blows it out uh, does that look familiar you've probably seen that effect somewhere that's what's going on it's just saying okay map these values to white now if I drag the white slider down that's kind of like a fade effect right this would be like if I were to click the layer and drop its opacity and there was a black image on the background it would basically do the same exact thing that I've got going on here I don't know why it keeps doing that it does the exact same thing it just darkens it down and if I do the opposite it lightens it out it fades it to white fade to white fade to black same thing okay um, so now the curves tool let's open the curves tool because you can actually do the same thing uh, in the curves tool that we were just doing and you do that by going to image adjustments and curves or control M is the shortcut that'll get you there too so <clears throat> here we have a similar thing right you have a grayscale or a gradient going from black to white and this is showing the input and this is here the output so it's the exact same thing in the levels if you think about that this is the input levels this is the output levels same thing going on here if I were to drag my uh, top of this curve this is basically showing a linear gradient meaning this value here if it goes up it's gonna be mapped to this value this white is gonna be mapped to hundred percent white so if I drag down this slider it's like bringing down the um, fade to black or fa fade yeah fade to black it's like fading to black it drops the white value saying this white value is only going to be mapped to the highest value right here which is this dark gray and then it works its way down obviously right so now if I do the opposite and if I say bring it to this side notice now how it shoots all that white over just like uh, when we were creasing in the levels um, adjustment how we did this it's doing the same thing What's neat with this tool is that it's a curve. So I have control over how that's mapped. So usually when I create uh, an adjustment layer or I need to adjust the contrast in the image because it's too low or maybe it's too high, I'm going to grab my curves tool because I can go in here and create this S curve, which will, I'll show you if I click it on and off, see how the contrast is, incre is increased, but it doesn't clip. There's still a transition from this to black whereas when you use the levels tool to increase your contrast you've lost all this data now see this is all 100 percent white you've basically thrown out all this information in the image and you rarely want to do that so I like the curves tool for this reason you can map it out and you can do this however you want so if you're like if you you had an image and you thought that the grays were very very dark and you wanted to boost them up you say okay I'm gonna do that and pop this down so this curve will lighten the shadows and you can tell that by when I click the preview button on and off you can see how they're brightened or if my highlights are very 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 bright and I need to 
clip them, or I mean not clip them, but I need to drop down their brightness, I do this. So this is another S curve, but this is going to reduce contrast. And you can see that in the before and after. There's a lot of gray tones, but you still have the highlights at the end, and you still have the shadows. So anyways, I hope that gave you a good understanding of how the curves work, how the levels work, what's going on, and trying to understand it, what Photoshop's doing to your colors so you can make a decision when you want to edit that. I typically, just to give you an example, if I had a mask and I needed to edit, say, <clears throat> say if I were to um, just erase this image within a mask, right? And let's see if I can get a few different values going on and stuff. And I wanted to edit this mask because this is a frequent thing that comes up when I'm working with images, right? I have this grayscale image on my mask okay and I found out that ah, this is it's too much of a mask I mask too much of it I want whatever effect that I'm doing with this layer it's a it, it, it was applied too much so what I'll do is I'll open my levels on the mask and I'll say well I need to decrease this uh, effect um, that's going on but obviously it's a grayscale so I know that I just need to basically reduce the high point of it so I'm gonna come in here and just bring oh, that's the wrong one because it's black I'm thinking backwards I need to bring up my black value see and I'm gonna reduce the overall effect particularly in the um, well that this is an overall effect actually so I would bring this down I think sometimes you have to think a little more um, it's the opposite I'm going to bring this down. Okay, and that's going to reduce the effect uh, in the lower values. Or if I needed to reduce the value in uh, the shadows, I'm going to bring this down. That makes sense? So I use this a lot to edit my, I use the levels more so to edit my masks. You know, say that I, oh, I want a little bit more uh, actually effect in the overall look of the image. Then I'm going to bump this up. And you see it kind of, oh. I'm look again. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm going to bump this down, which says, okay, apply the overall effect to the entire image, not just this area, but still mostly apply it to the area that I had here. So, anyways, here's some tips for you on how the levels and curves adjustment in Photoshop works. If you have more questions, feel free to give me uh, a holler. Uh, please comment, subscribe, and please share this. If you have any other questions, please. Please send them over, like I said, and I'll follow up with a few more videos. Thank you for watching. My name is Matt with Creative 8.